Picking all for the most part, nothing indifferent Sometimes be stuck in my ways, we can fit up in somebody's kitchen Stacking my hand down, chowing with the trips and my few cans do So I walk like Winston, trust me I wake up hanging You hang that I'm leaving this bed, you're kidding I'm sitting on back in the pad, get deep fried And I smoke some plaques of the grass Put the feet up, kick back and relaxing your best No, I'm sticking on Riley's gown Oh, the ultimate BMT And I was like, eh, aye, if you want And then... When they were making it, they started putting cucumbers in that on it, and I was like, ah, no, nee, nee, nah, nah, cucumbers, no, like, well, it's not an ultimate BMT then. And I was like, what if, oh, no, I think it changes James, it, is that I don't want cucumbers. This is it. the fucking, uh, you get into fucking Halfords with the windscreen wipers again. <laughs> Mind you, you came in here and you're like, ah, this fucking Would you agree with the ultimate BMT, guys? You asked for an ultimate BMT, no, I, I and he tried to give you one, and you were like, geezer, nah. He's a BMT, and he was like, oh, uh, do you want the ultimate BMT? And I was like, is that better? And he's like, aye. And I was like, aye then, I'll have the ultimate. I thought it was just bigger. Oh, so you didn't even know what that... No, I'm not. I'm one, what I've came in for years and years to Subway to get. I think these are both in the right, in a certain way. But then I go, oh, no, cucumbers, please, mate. And he goes, oh, well, it's not an ultimate BMT then. Is it for one? You're an idiot. And you're like, all oh, right, I Is it though? Oh, apologies, mate. I don't want one Subway's anymore. sold the fuck out, mate. Is it, aye? I think so, aye. Do you think it's... Oh, I hate Subway now. It's sucking the dick of the overlords. Mate, see when I used to dog it in school, I used to go down to Subway and get a foot long and a cookie and a drink for like a fiver. Oh, aye, aye. Well, I was, a fiver? I was 12 quid or something now. What, what price do you think you're now, Jamie? You're, you have, you have, you're a Subway guy. I'm on a Subway guy. <laughs> I'm not oh, I'm a Subway. Subway guy. What do you think I get for Subway? Uh, Just looking at me, judging that? me. Meatball marinara. Meatball marinara. I get... Grated cheese and barbecue sauce. Good, that sounds nice. Is that a tasty meal? <laughs> no, I, fucking 14 no, both That's these, what I'm saying. Both these are going to know what I mean by this, right? The Subway used to have good juices, didn't it? Used to be able Gatorade, to get, Blue Gatorade. Blue Gatorade, uh, Robinson's, like... I bet they have that and then they also uh, have the wee fountain machine. No, but no, they've changed to Coke. They're not with the Pepsi brands anymore. What did I say? So they, told, they sold it. It's Powerade, not mate. <laughs> they've sold it to the Coca-Cola. Mate, lot. see when some, somewhere has like an option like that and it's like Blue Gatorade, I'm oh. automatically like... See, when they put pure thought in it, they'll just select it, <laughs> actual. Mate, there's a place in Uddingston called Chilo's, right? Uh, oh, Chilo's, Chilo's bur burgers, bro. No, no but it's, aye, the burgers are good, but they do this juice, Chilo's Mandarin. Oh, the Mexican? And it's in a can. No, it's no, mate. It's just like, they've made it. I don't oh. know how. I don't know how you made it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking all sorts of Mandarin and that. I don't know. <laughs> but just spoke Chinese at it for ages. What a Mandarin, <laughs> fucking. <laughs> no, but, uh, mate, it's... I order Excellent. it for that. I mean, I used to go into Subway for Blue Gatorade, I don't know. But then I also go to that separate, see if you have that Mexican cola shit. I like that stuff. Uh, the Doritos? I have a one in that, Doritos. <sighs> me and you, the, the taste buds are, are so right. exotic. <laughs> they're so exotic, mate. Right, mate, what are we up to? Right, we're back. Deep Fried is back. Boom. Back with a bang. A nuclear bang. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> uh, so this is a big, a big hitter, I would say. Yeah. This is... How would you rank this topic in terms of stuff we've studied? Mate, see, see for like getting into it, mm -hmm. this is probably one of the top dogs, mate. This is one that I've been very, like, I've been falling asleep listening to Aye. books on the subject and that. Do you know what I mean? You don't realise how deep it all Aye, runs? Like the... I, I don't why do I get in a way the room, mate, but I the the deep the, the roots of this f like family, mate. Oh, the, the dynasty of on, the Kims on a nation, the Kim dynasty, bro. It's it's nuts, it's, um I think we should just get the hell out of it. I mean, absolutely. We can't it. fuck about this, trips. It's too. Well, we'll explain kind of what's we're going to do. Aye, so this will be part one, because uh, it's just so long, right? So we're going to hit sort of. Up till maybe what? What are we thinking? Uh, to two thousand, like ju ju I think just up until the current supreme leader takes power. Maybe. Right. Okay. Because there's a, even you could do another three episodes on since then as well. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? No, you definitely. So you want to give it? It's you want to give it as due. You know what I mean? It needs its due. Uh, right. So you're going on with the first part, aren't you? Mate? Yes. So I mean, <clears throat> before I before I even start reading this, before like when we spoke about doing this as a topic. It's like, I knew it was fucked, but I didn't realise how much stuff had gone on. Like, I know North Korea is isolated, it's restricted, 
the people were all sort of brainwashed in a way and but I didn't even realise all the mad events that took place Aye, to lead yeah, up to yeah. it. And that's what made me curious about this. It's like, all right, we know what it's like now, but like, how how did it get like that? Mm-hmm. How did it end up like that? So I guess we're going to find this out, guys. We're going to find out. So the, the story of North Korea begins with a man named Kim Il-sung. Kim was born April 15th, 1912, into a re- fairly regular family in modern day Pyongyang. So that's like the capital now. Aye. That's where, I imagine we went Pyongyang. Yeah, that's where the big hitters are, that's where the big boppers are. <sighs> Mate, that would be the ultimate Riley's gaff, like, vlog king. Aye, but we're journals, In bro. North Korea. We're journals. No journals allowed, bro. <laughs> I think Do we you, could persuade them that so? we're no journals. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. Show them five minutes of the pod. <laughs> <laughs> mate, we'll email them five minutes of the pod. This is your journalism, can, can we come? Can we come? Yeah, we'll pick you up, mate. mate. you know we're not going to see him, mate. Mate, 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 bro. <laughs> Talk about match. <laughs> we're going to see him, mate. About any of that shit. Fuck all these guys. Mate, I'm going to use, mate. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, two years before Kim was born, obviously born 1912, the Japanese had began occupying the Korean Peninsula, something Kim's family were firmly against. So they were quite outspoken against that. Some people were like, maybe it's a good thing. Do you know what I mean? And just let them in or whatever. But they were one of the, the families that were like, this should, this can't happen. Right. We're not into this. The resistance. Japanese, chase yourselves. Aye. Get out. Fling your hook. That's <laughs> right. right. <laughs> <laughs> fucking up my fucking road. It's been enough. <laughs> so the year Kim was born, 50,000 Koreans were arrested by the Japanese and many families were displaced from their homes. So anybody that was speaking out, protesting about it, saying anything about it, were just like, right, fuck up. Captured get by the, by the, the Japanese? I captured and then like they would send some families to like China, send them like just get to fuck, we're in here now, you're going to cause trouble, get out, get out. sling your head. Don't fuck about the Japanese. <laughs> no, no, efficient. He grew up in total admiration of his father and would listen to his endless rants on why the Koreans must displace their occupier, the Japanese. In 1919, Koreans took to the streets in their thousands to peacefully protest against their Japanese colonizers. The now famous March 1st movement began in Seoul and grew into other cities in Korea. So it was a big march that thousands of Koreans, obviously a lot of them weren't happy with it because they were seeing what the Japanese were doing. Mm -hmm. And they took to the streets in this one day. And it like, it started in Seoul, but like, because they found out that people were doing it there, they were like, right, we'll do it. And it started spreading uh, the whole uh, of Korea. They were trying to like overthrow them basically. But it was a, it was a peaceful protest. Like they weren't like, out try to fight with them. They were like, we don't want this. And we're protesting against ah, it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was the March 1st movement. But the protest was violently and quickly shut down by the Japanese, the efficiency, <laughs> leading to thousands of arrests, injuries, and even some casualties. Kim, aged seven at the time, claimed to be in the heat of the action at the protest. He stated that this is the first time he's seen Korean blood being spilled and it made his heart burn for revenge. The conflict forced forced thousands to flee to other countries with Kim and his family being exiled to China. Oh. So he got sent out after like going to that protest and that. He was in the heat of the action with his old boy. How many (laughs) many old boy would do? (laughs) Know what I mean? It's basically like now like people, Celtic fans are only happy with the transfer window. It's like you and your old boy going down to Park Heath and like holding a lull outside. You're just looking up at your old dad. I'm like, "Ah, what? (laughs) Uh, so he, he got sent so a, to... a China parley with him at this point? Uh, is, that, is that a nice exile? Or a no, no nice exile? I don't know. Well, the thing is, like, you're... You get forcibly sent to any other country. It's not a nice way to go, even if it's going to be... Aye, aye. Like, no, nah, like, you're away from your home. Like, aye. they didn't want to move. They were getting forced out, so it wasn't a good thing. But, um... In China, he began to attach himself to communist ideals, starting his own underground Marxist group, which landed him in jail at 17 years old, because they just didn't put up with that, mate. Marxist, nah. Nah. Uh, By 1931, he joined the Communist Party in China and continued to wage war against the Japanese. His military efforts were appreciated by the Soviet army. They offered him and other communist fighters from Korea refuge and to be part of their army. It was here in Russia in a military-based tent that Kim Jong-il was born. 
the man who would go on to bring North Korea into an unfathomable state just a few decades later. So I didn't know that. He was born in Russia. He was born in Russia. He... Born in a tent in Russia. Raised by Soviets. Bro. Raised by the world. <laughs> raised, raised in the fucking icy, mm-hmm. icy snow. So, so his dad's like, you, we're going to see his dad wasn't a great guy, but you can see at this point, he's actually got like, after these wars and after he returns home, he's actually like a hero for them because he's actually out fighting the Japanese constantly. And like, he's been him and a, a group of Koreans, he was made the general Aye. and then he was like with the Soviets fighting with the Soviets. And was that all his Korean troops? That was his troops. Aye. So he's, he's a man basically at this point. Um, but either in a military base and his mum gave birth to, to young Kim Jong-il in a tent. In return for the Koreans' efforts in the fight for communism, the Soviets agreed to help free the Korean peninsula from Japanese rule. Kim returned to Korea as a national hero, claiming he is responsible for the freeing of his people. Mm-hmm. So this is like starting to see his personality in terms of like, he done well, do you know what I mean? And Aye. he got, he done his bit, Aye. but he comes back and he's like, ah, it was me. I murdered all them. I'd done it. <laughs> it was me against the lot. They all ran. Don't use that actual word. I seen the biggest one. I seen the biggest jack. Oh. Right? I went out to my other. I hear you. I can't. Hell you. <laughs> me. <laughs> me. Hell you. Uh, so when he got back, he declared himself the leader of what would go on to be known as North Korea. I think we've got a wee spillage over there. What's that? Is that your bag or my bag? No, it's my bag, mate. It's all good. Uh, it's all right then. As long as my shit breaks and yours doesn't. Aye, it? no <laughs> invaluable in, in your bag, like cameras <laughs> and equipment. <isn't> <laughs> uh, so yes, he, he returned and declared himself the leader of what would go on to be known as North Korea. In 1948, after World War II had ended, separate governments were established in each zone of Korea. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea would be the North, and that would be under Kim Il-sung, who just returned for the war. And the Republic of Korea, which is the South, and that would be under Sing Man Ri, which I thought sounded a bit like a Tame in Palace song or something. Sing, sing, sing Man Ri. Yeah, <laughs> sort of, I don't know. It doesn't like sound that. like a Korean name, I don't think that. No. Sing Man Ri. Sounds Indian or something, that. I think so. I, I think I, so. It does sound, maybe. Mm-hmm. So... Kim Jong-il was born, he goes back and he is the son of the supreme leader of this entire nation. So his upbringing's got to be a bit different to everybody else's in. Cushy, bro. Uh, <laughs> Cushy wee number, bro, in with the council. <laughs> Dago is a job with the council, bro. Aye, that, he'd have been sorted, mate, because I, I presume at the time, like what was it, 1948 or something, Korea's not a nice place to be, I don't think, is it? No, nah, they're like constantly fighting the Japanese and... I it's a it's just a war zone basically, but but then he's not every time of road chilling. Well, go, just see going back to where he was born. Obviously, Kim Jong Il was born in Russia, but this is where like even him being born, this is where the elaborate lies start to like build his persona up, right? So when he was born, his name wasn't even Kim Jong Il; <laughs> it was Yura Kim because they were in a, an area of Russia near like a place called Yaxi or something. Right, right. And that was, he, he was called Yura and his, his brother was called something else, like a Russian start of the name. Um, so I was referring to where he was born there, but instead of admitting the truth that he was born in Russia, his name was changed to Kim Jong-il. For the actual event of his birth, we have an even better tale spun. It was said that his birth took place in Korea and when he was born, a glacier on Mount Pektu cracked. So that's the highest peak in Korea. Aye. Like the most important mountain. It's like they're, it's their nervous. No, I mean. It's their nervous. Are we nervous? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so proud of we nervous. Ne- nervous cracked in the Aye. day you were born. So he said, it, it, it said in official records that a glacier cracked uh, on this mountain. A double rainbow appeared and a new, a new star automatically appeared in the sky. <laughs> um, and so, it also goes on to state that after he was born, by three weeks he was talking, completely talking, aye. and by eight weeks he was walking. Just cutting a bit. Aye. A wee embryo, bro. Just, <laughs> just absolutely. So they're building up his, like, this lineage mm-hmm. of, like, you were saying, like, he had a mad, a cushy kind of life, mm-hmm. but they're trying to make it like, no, but he's immaculate. He's like, ah. They, they, they do this thing where they try and make this, the Kim family, they try and brainwash people into thinking that they're otherworldly. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, there's no point even viewing them 
is the same as what you view yourself because right. they're they're a different thing and you're only getting treated equally but it's all right because they're that's right. the kims, the kims like, obviously they're gonna mate that's like it's the kims so that they're god are they like pure godlike at this point well, well not mate it's actually always been like an atheist country right right i think because their god is basically the family because mm-hmm. that's that's what dynastic countries are like in it. Mm-hmm. It's like they don't really have a standard religion. Mm-hmm. And see, see the thing about his his name, why they didn't want to admit um, he was born in Russia, and that is because North Koreans are like very they're very national nas- nationalistic. Is that the word nationalist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like they try and distance themselves from any other country, really. So the fact that they were involved with the Russians and in with them, and like they try and pure distance themselves with that. So that scene is like a lower thing to be involved with that. So that's why they were like, nah, you were born, he was born in Korea. Aye. Glacier cracked, double rainbow. They Korea were saying as well, like, um, like a hundred cranes, see like the bird, that's aye, the aye. bird of Korea. Right. And like a hundred of them flew out of the mountain just <laughs> at the exact time. And it's mad because you're like, that sounds crazy, but. It's mad, I know, because I would think like my instant reaction, see when you said he was born in a tent in Russia and pure snowy winter on that, like I would, I would have thought the way you would spin that is like he's a mad warrior child, like he's pure born in a, a on mm-hmm. a, an army camp and that, but they just went, no, these cunts are dumb enough. They'll believe, like, the cranes will be flying about. Aye. The mountain, Ben Nevis is gone. It's that thing as well where they want that otherworldly factor. So uh, seeing that he was born in this war thing and he's tough and that, they'd be like, I would respect that, but that's still fathomable to them. Aye, Whereas aye, aye. if you make up these lies about how he was born and stuff, it's like... That supernatural shit. <laughs> I, it's like, you don't even, you can't even imagine yourself being on the same level as him. So aye, when you okay, see yeah, them aye. and they look all right and that and you're like starving, aye. you're like, a fair to it's A sound. Na- Are you wanting, I've got a bit of change on it, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'm all <laughs> just <for> that. <laughs> aye. So that's obviously the lies that start when he's growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, but when he's five years old, his brother dies under very mysterious circumstances. So Kim and his four-year-old brother were playing in a pond one day <laughs> and his brother died in the pond. Uh, he drowned in the pond. Many Koreans speculate that Kim was responsible for it. So five years old mm-hmm. and people think in Korea, it's like gossip that like, oh, Kim killed his brother. I when he, be- did. he was five and he w- the brother was four. <laughs> Mate, there's been but some Kim- malpractice in there. Has a five-year-old ever, like, killed somebody? I, I know, I don't know. I'm thinking about films and that. I'm thinking about horror I films and that. Chucky and that. Shining and that, mate. Joey <laughs> Twins and that, mate. You want to come play in that? Mate? They kill people all the time. Mate, <laughs> I don't know. Like, no, maybe no, but... There's, no, there's never been any actual evidence to show that he did or he didn't. Would it be, Jink, you could drown? Nah, you could drown a, fo- a four-year-old. Could, could drown. I drown a four-year-old? No. I'd like to a, think so. As a four-year-old, <laughs> you're around about a pond. Do you think it's that's prime time for drowning? I think I could probably I think you could accidentally drown somebody aye. when you're five. Like, oh! Like, aye, aye, maybe, aye. I hate, mate. You no, know I hate getting ducked under the water. I like duck, mate. Oh, <laughs> you are a big duck. I'm <laughs> ducks fun, mate. You, I bet you're the wee guy that's running about the aye, food, ducking mate, everybody. I get everybody, mate. Oh. I get my mom up. <laughs> mate, we've not got the time catch anywhere after this, mate. Fuck. Like that. <laughs> Lanza. No. <laughs> Lanza's off the cards. Um, so I there's no actual evidence to say if he did or didn't, but this is where you see how fucked North Korea's psychology is with their politics. So it's if if you get accused of killing your brother, right, when you were five and he was four, you'd be like, obviously I didn't. Mm-hmm. See there, see because their politics are run on fear basically. The fact that people think he done that, he's like, no bad. Aye. He's like, I don't care. Because we'll it only that. builds to like, why you should like, feel like it's very important to be seen as like a hard man in Korea. Aye. Like North Korea, like yeah, it's a tough place. So it's, it's a like, militarized kind of, mm-hmm, like there's heavy emphasis on the military. So to have the possibility of a hard man is a bit of a hard man I, down. I am murdered my four year old bra. Pyong, oh, bra. <laughs> Pyongyang, a bit of a hard man down. <laughs> Young young is a hard man down. It is, it really is. Uh, so he doesn't actually mind. It's like Stalin as well used to there'd be um stories about him robbing banks and that when he was young. And it was like he 
as a leader, you'd want to be like, no, I'm a good person. I wouldn't do that. But he was like, I fucking did. Aye. So don't fuck about it. I don't fucking don't mess with fuck me. with me. I'm sure there's stuff like about Churchill and all that. I know. I'm sure like. <laughs> that's how you, that's how you get respect back in the day. I mean, you just talk all that shit. slap a few <laughs> veins about <laughs> Get a bit of respect back in the day. Um, so obviously his brother dies when he's just five and then his mum dies like a couple of years later. So this meant it was just Kim and, Kim and the old man. <laughs> uh, however, his father happened to be the leader of the country and didn't have much time, if any, for any of his children. So not a good daddy. Mm. Not there for Kim's baseball practice. <laughs> uh, shortly after Kim Il-sung became the leader, he soon set his sights on South Korea. It wasn't enough that he had his own so-called communist country. He wanted the full of Korea to, to unite under communism. So he sent troops into Seoul and started a war with South Korea. The United Nations, with the US taking a leading role, intervened to support South Korea. So they were fight. Obviously, the US are, all, are always fighting against communism mm -hmm. back in the day. So as um, soon as they knew the conflict was there, and like it was a sort of even conflict, they were like, right, we need to jump in and. Because their whole thing was like saving the world for communism. Crush, like, crush the comms, bro. I'm with them. Crush the comms. <laughs> yeah, the crush. I'm, a ca I'm a capitalist. So, see, I don't know if you might go into this or that, but do you think, you know how like um, America helped out with the South, the the South Korea? And obviously, so like North Korea is quite Soviet. It's got Soviet ties and shit. Do you think that's why like so South Korea is pure class now and pure like... Aye, well, aye. Are you going into that? Aye, sorry, aye, aye, aye. Not I sorry. Know um... It's just, well, it's basically because they went, they went one way mm -hmm. and done their politics fucked in South Korea, but like, we'll just do capitalism. Aye, it's mad. And they've pure thrived under like it. Like, seeing that stark difference, but Aye, it's like a, it's like a, what do you call that? Like a, a it's a, a dichotomy. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what you mean. It's a, Aye. it's like total opposite ends of the, exactly, end of the scale. Yeah, they both yeah. went complete opposite ways. And then you can see it in real time. It's mm -hmm. mad. Uh, so the Chinese ended up intervening. On the, to fight with North Korea. So it was a tag team match. It was China and North Korea versus the US and South Korea. Um, and that was in late 1950. So that only prolonged the war and it just made it brutal. So many deaths. So after three years of this war going on, it was like intense fighting. They just agreed a truce. It was, it, they were like, right, it, like, we're not at peace. They were just agreeing to no shoot anybody they knew. Aye. Was it because everything was that fucked or something? People were just that, like, there was just so many deaths and they were like, no, what? we need to just, nobody's getting eaten at this. That's wild, isn't it? You're not winning, I'm not. That's a lose-lose scenario. We're just going to kill each other. Eye for eye makes us all blind. We're not going to end up fucking dead. What are they drinking now? So that was in, that was uh, July 27th, 1953, that the truce, truce was agreed. So the Korean Peninsula remained divided, the north and the south. With the K Korean demilitar demilitarized zone, serving as a buffer between North and South Korea. So a formal peace treaty was never signed and technically the two Koreas remain in a state of war as only a truce was agreed upon. That's so there's still at war. The new. Mm -hmm. So there's a big stretch of land at the border and it's um, it's a demilitarized zone so n none of them are allowed to be in, the, in there with like, their army. So uh, like yeah, they've yeah, agreed yeah. that this zone is like free of it all. I Like right along the border. But there's been like incidents over the years of like some coming in and then see how like, a gang fight when you're younger and it's just like they all just jam, dance dance up to each other and then dance back and it's like you're fuck, I swear to God <laughs> fuck it fucking hell there I swear to God <laughs> about that. is that like trucks and that like but three miles but in Korean I like three miles away from each other like driving back forward like, oh uh, fuck I <laughs> and attack each other <laughs> fuck <laughs> so they're still at war and it says as well like see this area see because it's so quiet it's became a pure beautiful nature reserve is it because there's such there's so you many few that? no you can't go there it's like neither of them are allowed on it in it technically so and is it like is it like on the border there's like a mile and it's like it just mm -hmm. stretches the full way aye that's mad isn't it mm -hmm. that's a mad pure weird uh, part of the world like imagine going there walking it I know <laughs> what 800 miles or <laughs> just to the border I'm just walking to demilitarised Korean <laughs> for charity and that well I get you I'm just at the Korean demilitarised <laughs> zone <mate. laughs> right sitting back at Eddie bro jumped out <laughs> but I'm 10 bro I <laughs> <laughs> uh, so after this war Kim Il-sung stated to his people they would now be running the country on a little thing they call Juchi mm. have you heard of it Juchi no I haven't mm, you're about to mm -hmm. 
Duchy is a philosophy which is used to guide the country across all aspects of their existence. So their economy, how they run the army. It's just, it's like, this is the philosophy behind every decision. Ingrained in every part of the country. Aye. So it promotes... It promotes the belief that a nation should have control over its destiny and it not be influenced or dominated by external power. Sounds good to Fair me. Does. It advocate, advocates for economic self-sufficiency and independence. The idea is to minimise reliance on foreign aid or assistance and develop a strong self-reliant economy. Say, so I don't need no man, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a strong independent career. I, I basically, mate, I, we don't need you as anyone. <laughs> I mean, hands on the phone. I don't need no China. <laughs> no, because he was he was pretty he was like raging after that war, but he was like, I don't want people to have to fight with like because they were probably getting their asses handed to them by the US and South Korea until the Chinese jumped in, and the, but he came out of that like, I don't want us to fucking need people to jump in for us. Aye. We need to be the guys. Oh, so this is this is it. Ramp up. This is this is where it becomes what we sort of know. Uh, the the Duchy ideology also places importance on maintaining a strong and capable military as a means of ensuring national security. Nothing highlights this more than Kim Sung Il, Kim Il Sung, sorry, demanding a million man army after the end of the Korean War. So, like, as soon as that war was finished, he's like, "We need a million of in this. <laughs> we need probably about a million cunts. <laughs> forty, fifty, <60. laughs> <laughs> counting scores." <laughs> 20, 40, hold on, hold on. <laughs> million. <laughs> How do you come up with that number? I don't it sounds good. A million guys. The million right? man army. It sounds like a movie. And they got a guy for a million guys. <laughs> <laughs> million horny guys ready to come up to a mad building. Yeah, right? Million horny Koreans. But <laughs> <laughs> they go for it. Funnily enough, it's also heavily leader centered, meaning it's pretty much a one man show in terms of any sort of big or even small decisions being made. So that's like, they're like this, we need to rely on ourselves, we need to do this, we need to build our economy. You don't need to do what I say. <laughs> uh, that, uh, it's like, you know, and For also, and small things. And also this small print, like, I, I run it all. <laughs> you don't get seen it. It's, it's, it's so funny thinking about like the Supreme Leader, like now it's like big and small issues, like him like signing permits for like, an, an extension and that. You know uh, what I mean? It's like, what, you want a conservatory? Fuck it, like, you know. It's just big line of Koreans. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Every matter, mate, I can throw everything. <laughs> it all comes through me <laughs> like, imagine taking on that response I'll like, sit here all day it's me <laughs> that makes the decision <laughs> mate you kind of need that but you kind of need one guy just sitting sorting every do it what mate he knows what he's doing I'm not I'm quite I'm on his side at this point <laughs> so I it's it's a one man show but Kim Jong Il has a role to play in this the young man he's made propaganda leader so he's only a young man at this point but all these rules that, that are set now for the Korean people, they obviously only apply to people who aren't in the Kim family, of course. Mm -hmm. Any of these sort of, you must do this now, you must, everything you must give it to us and we'll deal with it. And, and very restrictive, can it? They don't import, obviously there's this duty ideo ideology is about, we do, it's very like, um, it's like heavily on nationalism as well. So it's, they don't want a, uh, even culturally, they don't want you to think, now the way we like go, oh, Asian culture's quite cool. And like, you think about other cultures and go, that's quite nice. I, I, I like that about that culture. They're like, nah, don't even think about other cultures. This is, th this is it. And we, don't, we don't need anything else just us. for anybody. We do it all here. <laughs> Name, important things, Aye. nothing. We're going to do everything One just here. Taiwanese trainers and, and that. I'm in charge. <laughs> and it's all, and I'm running and it. it comes, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm running the damn and the thing, right? stops with me, all right? <laughs> Oh, they say. <laughs> uh, so, aye, the rules only apply if you're not in, in the Kim family. So, as Kim Jong Il gets older, he develops a fascination with film. Oh, loves the film Kim Jong Il. Loves the pictures, not. He demands that North Korean officials fly him in thousands of movies. He was said to have one of the biggest movie collections in the whole world because <laughs> he would just get officials to be like, right, go and get me like a hundred movies for the US mm -hmm. and they would just fly them in. And is this the, the old guy? Is this the leader or the wee boy? This is his boy now, Kim Jong-il, Kim Jong his son. The propaganda guy? Either he's the now pr the propaganda leader um, and he's, he's, he's only still young as well. But So he grew up loving movies. Mm. Um, he's, James Bond was his favourite movie. But it's funny because I, well, you're going to see what, how he acts later when he becomes leader. But 
he was saying that like because he had no reference to like what was real and what was not for the West because he's he's never been there. He's no Aye. they don't <laughs> read books about. Do you know what I mean? Aye. He thought like. Now James Bond is like, right, this mad guy needs to go on a mission to catch this mad bad guy and that. And like, see the things he does, like poisons drinks and that, and like pure hijacks planes. And he thought that was like, real. he thought that was like a documentary on shit that really happened. Aye, we so need to be doing this. He didn't think it was like sensationalized. He thought like, oh, I know that this is a movie, but this is based on things that they happen. Aye. So he, that's how he thought you just went about things. Aye. Is, is that a training video for him? I <laughs> basically, basically. Is that we need to get our boys in on this shit? Like, <laughs> see this 007 guy, he's mad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it said that he also wrote 1,500 books in three years. Which oh, is bad God. Good going. <laughs> so this is when he's at his it's a uh, Kim Kim Il Sung University. So this is when he's a young man. He's say, maybe a bit of a party boy, by the way, in, oh, in college and that. Mm -hmm. Like drinking like, at a young age and like, Partying, oh, girls, 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 the booze, the drugs, <laughs> everything, oh. man. Uh, and that's the that's the military school, in it. Aye, that's like the most prestigious place you can go, obviously, because it's named after him. But <laughs> he went there. Um, he also directs three operas in the space of three years, all of which are said to be better than any other opera in human history. Oh, I'd like to see it. Imagine you make an opera, you're like, that's the goat. You make your set one and go. I've taught that one. It's better than the last. The third one, you're like, ah, I've done it. I've <laughs> actually done it again. <laughs> the second one was my favourite personally, but the three of them are tap free. For aye, them. just <laughs> all of them are number one. <laughs> and this is where you see these lies that are mm. building up his character. Um, another amazing lie is Kim's achievements as a sportsman. Um, mm. The first time Kim ever picked up a golf club, he went to North Korea's only golf course and he shot 18 holes in one and then immediately just retired after it and never oh. picked up a club again. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to first it that. 18 holes in one, back up the road. Easy. Nah, that was, why would I do that again? Man, I just dusted, I just completed the that game. Was, that was piss easy. It's fair enough, I know. If I got 18 holes in one, I probably would first, be like... Aye. I think that's reasonable. Aye. You go to a golf course you've never even played before, you get 18 holes <laughs> in one. You're going to be like... I, I can do this game. I need to find something better. Like, I, I need to find need something more challenging. <laughs> His main love, though, was always the movies. He directed multiple films with, which North Koreans were forced to go and watch and, of course, were forced to enjoy. So he would make these movies and then they would make everybody get out their house and go and watch it and, like, pure clapping that journey. And it was, like, terrible, see, because they never, they never had any reference to, like, eating, right. eating cultural, like, they couldn't Probably didn't even know what acting was. I, I like they had no like imagination for any of this. Just so mad empty vessels, bro. And it's interesting as well. Like I, this is a side note of this, but I watched that Dark Side of the Ring. It's a Vice documentary about all the dodgy shit that's happened in wrestling. And it, it, Kim Jong Il invited WCW, the wrestling company, air to perform in Pyongyang. And as soon as they go there, they got all their passports taken off them, their phones taken off them. They had a guard with them everywhere they went to the oh. toilet. There was a guard with a gun with them the full time. Um, they, they were not allowed to do anything. They all had to be inside by like seven, like mad steroid wrestlers for the 90s. That's and mad. they said that when they performed, they said like there's like 150,000 person arena in, mm -hmm. in Pyongyang. Right? I like at this stadium, you've never seen anything like this, right? And it was filled like build to watch people wrestling and when they started wrestling they had a couple of big moves I'm like aye the crowd will love this one that silence because none of them knew what they were looking at they're, they're like, like they've never they've never known like oh like this is a thing that I can just observe and look at and go I like that and more oh, that's interesting they don't because they're it's, so repressed they don't even know what they're looking at they're mm. like they just get told when to clap in that so the first night none of them clapped in that and then the second night they went back and it was like they were going nuts Aye. and crying in the crowd and that because they were like, you just need to fucking Show start emotion. reacting to this. Aye. You're going to look bad. Aye, so they're just letting it all out. Aye, <laughs> like, just letting out. They're mad empty vessels, but they've still got a bit of something. And it's like, you need to show something. They're just all greeting. And they, know how, they can turn it on. <laughs> they can turn it on at any time. <laughs> uh, however, at this time, across the border, their neighbours, South Korea, were gaining international recognition for their movies. This enraged Kim. Given the lack of skills, the, South, the isolated... North Korean public had 
he could never improve his movies to equal that of South Korea. Because these people, they're not going to be imaginative people to, for him to work with that. It's like, they're not getting fucking anything. Aye, they're not, they don't, don't want to have concepts of art and all that. Aye, like. so he, he knew that there was a ceiling with the movies that he could make. Uh, so he comes up with a fucking wild plan for this. Um, Shin, Shin Sang Oak was a highly acclaimed South Korean film director. <clears throat> and Choi Yun Hee was his ex-wife, also a well-known actress in South Korea. So, like, two big time, a director and a, mm-hmm. a, an actress that used to be married and then split up or, or, or something. They've split up for a few years at this point. Troops, we've got an announcement. We are now offering a seven-day free trial on our half B tier over at our Patreon. So that means you'll get access to the end of the episode when you hear us switching over to Patreon at the end. That means you'll get access to all of those episodes. So... Why not give it a go? Seven day free trial. You can go right through our archive of every bonus Patreon episode we've done. We've even got a few episodes that are just bonus episodes that we chucked in for that tier at random times. So you'll have so much to watch through. Give it a try. It's one week. You'll not be charged. Cancel it before the end if you don't want to be charged. But it is, it's £3 a month. So it's up to yourself obviously we've got our other tiers of blue flavor boy tier with that obviously you get all the extended episodes but you also get a bonus episode each month you get access to the discord server you get to ask questions for guests and us we've also got the on it till tuesday tier where you get two bonus episodes every month you also get early access to all the episodes and you get 10 percent off merch and then obviously you get everything else that we've mentioned previously and then our biggest tier the goat tier the daddies you get to request an episode it can be eaten really within reason unless you want us to like strip off um we can discuss a price about that uh, but for 20 pound a month you can request an episode it can be anything it can be a conspiracy theory a watch along anything you can think of you get 20 percent off merch plus everything mentioned in all the other tiers so yes get on it troops www.patreon.com forward slash riley's gaff Trips, the podcast is brought to you by G4 Claims. If you're involved in a road accident that was not your fault, call G4 Claims on 01698 767 172 or visit them at notatfaultclaim.com. The process is completely free and you could keep 100% of your compensation. In 1978, while both were separately travelling abroad, they were lured to Hong Kong by false promises of a new pr- movie project. They were met by agents who bundled them onto separate boats and headed for North Korea. So, like, he sent, Kim Jong il sent four guys out. <laughs> Just four guys <laughs> sent them out and were like, ah, kidnapped them, bring them back to North Korea. That's insane. Isn't just it? a mad, ra- a famous actress and a fa- very famous director just be like, ah, just go and get them, bring them, bring them there. And they're like exes and all that. Aye. Like, pure, but imagine coming off the boat and being like, sure. No, what? but this, this, is the, <laughs> this is the beauty of it all, mate. So, um, Obviously, he he bundles them on. They bundle them onto these boats, and he said like they were both knocked out, right? And they woke up, and the first thing they seen was a portrait of Kim Il Sung, like because he's he's the eternal leader. That's the thing I didn't mention about him. He's the only leader of our country today who's no alive. He's still the leader today. Kim Il Sung is the eternal leader. They're just like the supreme leader, but he's still the leader, even though he's dead. I, mean, I didn't even know that. I, it, he's the eternal leader. So if you t- uh, technically the leader of uh, North Korea, the new is Kim, Kim Il Sung, even though he's been dead for 50 years, 60 That's years. insane, mate. Mental. That's actually nuts. She so just did a mad side note. Does he have like a mad burial ground or anything like that? Do you know? Because um, I'd imagine it'd be pretty fucking special for the eternal leader. <laughs> <laughs> oh, aye, I don't I doubt it. Their funerals of, are nuts. We've got lots of statues here, man. They've like, got like the biggest statue you've ever seen in your life, just of like him, like <laughs> <laughs> storing, holding a banana, yeah, and, and like a suit, <laughs> holding a banana. Like <laughs> uh, so sorry, where was I? So aye, they get kidnapped, and he- they are heading to North Korea, and there's a painting of the eternal leader. Aye. Or on the boat, just <laughs> staring at them. <laughs> so after t- being taken to North Korea, the two were initially held in separate locations. They were treated like members of the Kim family. They could have anything they wanted, except freedom, of course. So they, like he was like sending like bundles of gifts to them both every day. Mm-hmm. Like they were st- they were like isolated, like staying in their own houses and that. 
So they weren't, they weren't even with each other. They made one go here, one go here and just kept them. But he was like sending like nice food. He was sending like presents that that he knew things they liked Aye. and that. And he was sending them gifts to like, but it was, I think it's like a sort of grooming thing. Like you now that way, like Stockholm syndrome, where like say the, the person who's kidnapped you does a couple of nice wee things to you. There's a cup of tea, by the way, but they're like doing bad shit to you. It's like this mindset of like, oh, they're not actually that bad. You know that? Even though they've just kidnapped you. Which is so like, that would happen to me instantly. You'd be like, ah, fucking cactus fruit Red Bull. I mean, how did they know? And blue Gatorade. <laughs> oh man, I'm, I'm all right with this one. Well. seems like a nice guy. Nah, he seems all right. <laughs> uh, they were eventually brought together and pressured to collaborate on film projects, resulting in some of the worst movies the pair had ever been involved with. And it's, it's mad because, so, before we go on to this next bit, they never knew for about a year or something, right, that each, the other one had been kidnapped. <laughs> so they thought they were the only ones that had been kidnapped. So the, the female actress, uh, Yoon, Yoon Hee, and then the director, Shin, they didn't know each other had got kidnapped. <laughs> so Kim's big plan, right, now you're saying they don't know what acting is. Aye. He filled like a, he filled like a, a state, like a, an arena sort of thing with people from North Korea, right? Forced them to go. And they told both of them, right, get ready, you're going to your first uh, your your first party. Your first uh, North Korean party. And they're like, <laughs> right, fuck all right. Sound die. Sound die. <laughs> get Maybe the get car drags on. Get, get a wee booze here. <laughs> and um, he took them there, right? And they're mingling with like people from North Korea, like officials and that. And then they both get led into this room, mate, and they're just on this stage and they both see each other for the first time. And then they both realise and the whole thing has been a movie. So he made a movie of that situation happening and he comes out in the movie, Kim Jong-il comes out, wee tiny chubby Korean guy. And he's like, he's like, like he says, he delivers a line. I can't remember what the line is. It's like, oh, Fancy seeing this guy here? Oh, like, it was something ah. like that. Like he gave himself a, a pure the line of like, and now you meet unexpected. I <laughs> unexpected. I was like, fancy seeing you here. Yeah, something like that. And then they're like, what the fuck? And they turn around. And there's like a crowd of Korean people watching them, but they only thought they were going to a party. But that's that whole thing. Like, he thought he was making a pure masterpiece. And he says, do you know what you should do? You should get married. The new I'll marry you. I can marry you in North Korea. I am. Um, the guy, um, mate. Don't worry about him. You heard the Kim family? <laughs> That's me. Kim. <laughs> Kim is me, mate. Aye, so... But so, did that, did it film, like, did he film them in the apartments and all that? And like, I'm not sure, but this was like the... the, the crescendo. But I don't even, I think that might have just been the movie. Do you know what I mean? Like, aye, that meeting. That would be insane, mate. See if they, they did actual film, like, them getting captured and all that, and, like, <laughs> coming together and, like, them getting their presents and their, their jackfruit... Red Bull and all that and then, and then like coming together and meeting in the stadium for that'd mm -hmm. be the wildest film ever made me I would be that'd be unbelievable I mate. wonder what that looks like to watch that I don't know how you would even get but that a lot of this is quite difficult for me to picture like because it's such a such a weird place, society mate. and then because it's got like because you can kind of picture like Asian cities and that now very well Aye. but it's hard to picture them with a mad Soviet influence mm -hmm. like we mad the mad block concrete house you know what aye, I mean like, I'm aye. trying to think about what hall that was in and all I can think about is something that looks like a big car park like John Lewis or something aye, like aye, aye. you can't even like actual picture what it would look like in your head but aye, aye it's you kind of get cameras in and all that mm -hmm. it's like difficult to aye uh, but so they're here mate and they're there for years but one night Shin tries to escape he notices that his driver always leaves his car unlocked with the keys in it because it's a thing where like not a lot of people in North Korea had cars obviously and they just get any money <laughs> like you're, you're no, like, you need a permit to have a car and that and they need to approve it it's like Aye. they block out, out so many steps that like, it's just impossible to own it can't own a German mm -hmm. motor in the 50s and <laughs> so like the thought for North Koreans of somebody stealing a car was like why would you just like I'll leave this unlocked and that like who's going to steal it Maybe like you're going to get f the punishment's that bad like What's the point? I, I know what you would mean, be the I, point anybody try to do this? Like, no North Korean. No, a lot of that much crime there at all. No, because well, no, it can't, there can't be. Um, so, I, whilst this driver isn't looking, he steals the car, heads to the train station, boards a train heading towards China. 
But what he didn't know was that North Korea had spent years reinforcing to the population the importance of snitching. <laughs> so, like, their whole thing was, like, they have a theory, a, a, not a theory, but there's a thing they talk about in their, in the Duce sort of ideology Aye. of, like, self, almost, like, self-policing, self, like... Aye. Like admitting so things. Aye, it's, aye. It's, it's, it's say like at football games. Aye. Self you need to call him out. Nah. She didn't hear any of that shit. You called him out. <laughs> aye, mate. It's so he's like he's he's ingrained in him. Like so, they would they would tell like um, children to tell on adults. Like if you if you hear like in school, they would get taught like right. If you see an adult talking about wanting to leave here, just tell us. I like what's your man Darcy? Mm-hmm. Because what, ha- what the way they brainwash the kids there is nuts because they, the way they do it is they brainwash them and it's all towards the Kim family, right? So when you're a kid and now when we were five and we were getting read fucking Goldilocks or something, right? Mm. They're getting read a story about how Kim Il-sung uh, slayed the dragon. And, but all the propaganda is like age appropriate. So like Aye. they get taught that when they're five because they can understand that and he's the hero and that. Aye. And then as they get older, the stories get more complicated and like- And more like a uh, him being noble and all Aye. that. And, and like, like when, you, when you can understand what that means. So the propaganda is like, the, like it's it's said that, I oh know that's later, I don't want to ruin that actually. It evolves your brain, it evol- it's evolving in your brain because mm-hmm. it's like when you're young, it's like, as you say, it's this cartoonized hero guy mm-hmm. that's blah, 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 blah. And you get a bit older and you're like, no, this guy's smart. He's saying a lot of good times. Like, you get a bit older and he's like, he's a good big brave boy. Like, I, I, but you're like, the layers on this guy. He's just going <laughs> to all this fucking guy. He's going to all. Is that an onion? Do you think even when they're older, they still believe the Wayne stories? So like they're older and getting read more mature stories, like, but they're like, mind when he slid that dragon? I, I, well, I like, um, obviously I'm going to be talking about some Kims in the future, but the, a lot of the, the thing in a book that I was listening to, it said like, I mean, this guy's grandpa was Santa Claus and his dad was Jesus Christ. That's like what that was. That's what that is to that society. It's like these mythical figures that are, that's what he's came for. So that's why, you know what I mean? Obviously that's a bit, that's, that's a bit foreshadowing there. But yeah. <laughs> uh, so Shin's trying to escape. He's on this train, but within three train stops, he's caught and he's sent to prison for a year to think about what he's done. Somebody snitched. Somebody snitched like, and Three guys just turned up and were like, ah, you're the guy that stole the motor. And he's like, no. Oh. <laughs> <Not like, "Aye, laughs> like, come, come on, come on, get in the van. Snitches get riches. Snitches do get riches. That's the scene in the North Korea. <laughs> they get all the riches. That's the rap, rap songs and that. Aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> that's their, that's their hip hop. <laughs> Snitches get riches. So I, he, he, gets sent to, he gets sent to prison for a year. And it was not until 1986, during a visit to Vienna for a film festival, Shin and Choi managed to escape their North Korean captors by escaping out of a hotel room window and running to the US Embassy in Vienna. Fuck's sake. Because they couldn't enter, because obviously it's US Embassy. So aye, aye. They, they managed to escape and they were getting chased in that by them and they've got in just in the nick of time. That's, mean That's the only that. way they, they managed to escape. What an insane life. Like, imagine growing up and you're like an actress, a director, and like you've got this love of life in South Korea. Or it's I know. Just some kids get put a bag in your head. I mean, and it was also he could make m- good movies. Just Aye. kidnap two people. And that just shows his how little regard they have for other people's lives. Like, Aye. and it doesn't matter if you're important, like an actress or you're just a wee worker. Like, if you know them, they're like, you're, you're expendable. Aye. And especially like he obviously revealed him. He obviously re- revealed both of them because he loved films and that. Because obviously, like these are like an amazing direct. You like, know what I mean? Like, see if you were like like a mad if some a, a leader's meeting like Tarantino or something. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, that's a smart guy. That's a good Aye. guy. That's an equal kind of thing. Aye. And he's just like, no, you'll be kept in a house Aye. alone. I'll under give you shit. Twenty four hour surveillance, but you'll get Mars bars and that. You know? And good ones. <laughs> the big ones. Aye, Aye, no, 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 the duels. <laughs> 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 the uh, duels are too far, mate. <laughs> Unless it's a Yorkie, I'll take a Yorkie duel, but I'm not having a Mars bar duel. That's nuts. <laughs> no, <laughs> no one you've been kidnapped. <laughs> so after decades of isolated sta- state-led propaganda about the world, mixed with the pressure of self-reliance, North Korea is decades behind South Korea. The crowning moment for the development of South Korea was winning the chance to host the Olympics in 1988. Kim was obviously outraged by this. So his first move was to call on all the other communist countries to boycott the games. So Russia, I think. China. Aye, China. Like the big, big, they're big, big dogs. They're big medal takers. <laughs> <laughs> the Russians and the Chinese, mate. They're, taking, they're scooping up some I mean, medals. The Russians in the snow, mate. The Russians in the ice. Oh, bro. <laughs> so, but 
the 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 other countries they weren't convinced they were like oh like it's fine or why why we patch it it's just South Korea it's just South Korea mate Mm. Uh, but Kim the puppet master actually has a plan he sends two agents on a flight departing Baghdad and heading towards Seoul Airport the plane stops over in Abu Dhabi and the two agents head into Abu Dhabi town centre (laughs) I see aye. (laughs) <laughs> Once the plane leaves Abu Dhabi, a bomb goes off in an overhead locker. 115 South Koreans died on that plane, and Kim Jong Il's plan had gone off without a hitch. Wait. So he sent two people on a, a plane, but he's done one that's like a stopover. Uh-huh. So stopped over in Abu Dhabi, they planted the bomb, got off the plane, went into Abu Dhabi, then the plane left Abu Dhabi to go to South Korea. Obviously, most people on it are going to be South Korean. In a, a bomb went off an overhead locker as soon as they reached like oh my god bro uh, he sent two double o sevens i'm just thinking of it like mate, <laughs> that's what i'm saying james but he thinks like Aye, i'll just send two two agents on the plane bomb it <laughs> fuck it no, uh, he's uh, uh, like, <laughs> like, how funny is that kim jong use no hint any of this movie <laughs> to be honest he's just thinking about like casino royale uh, he's like this is sick <laughs> <as fuck, laughs> right. the plane will come down it'll be it'll go slow motion <laughs> Big explosion. explosion. <laughs> I'll grab the girl, kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, so he's, so he's bombed that plane, 115 dead. Um, but this was to show the other, this just shows like, oh, oh, the only reason he done this was to show the other communist countries that South Korea is dangerous, mate, don't I go there. Mm-hmm. That was like the whole, that's why he killed 115 <laughs> people. So he could be like, Russia, that's jailbait. Plane's not getting... <laughs> People have been bombed in that game. Look at my cool helmet. People died. Better than Russia. Russia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I, I they're, they're no convinced that they're, they're like, what? And then he does this and he's like, look, too dangerous to enter South Korea. However, South Korean intelligence traced the bomber to a hotel room in Bahrain. The agents both tried to commit suicide once they knew that they were wanted but only one of them was successful. So they had like cyanide capsules and they were trying to bite into them before they got caught by the South Korean like the CIA. police eye. Um, only one of them done it in time, but the other one couldn't burst it. So they got arrested uh, and it was a female agent that got caught and she's taking in and she admits that it was Kim Jong-il who planned the attack. So he's like, Russia, oh, China, I don't know what he's saying, mate. She's talking a lot of shit, mate. A woman, mate. Blah, 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 <laughs> blah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Better in <than> a history. <laughs> <laughs> so that just shows the, the sort of levels he's prepared to go to, mm-hmm. to for image, evidence about image. Was this, oh, that's dangerous, even though he bombed it. Aye, aye, Nuts. Aye. Um, so Kim Il Sung, has, Kim Jong Il's father at this point, is nearing his death. Kim Jong-il decides to appear nonchalant to his father about taking over. He sells it to his father that he has no interest in promoting himself. Only his father's legacy will be focused on if he takes over. It's clear that Kim Jong-il is the favourite to take over, but he decides to take out a few insurance policies. He bugs his father's home and phone, listening in for anyone who disregards his son as the new leader. So purging is essential in Korean politics and purging is just making moves to ensure that certain things happen, but it's like by any means necessary. I'm sure you'll go on it with Kim, Kim Jong-un <laughs> it whenever, whenever we do that. And so he was like, just listening, like anybody who was going into him being like, I don't know about that. Fucking just Kim the slightest sniff, and, and mate, mate. Like they would, they would die. Like they, there was several North Korean officials just turning up dead randomly at this time, mate, like just just randomly r- r- running into trees and that. With like a piano wire. I couldn't wear my suit. I <laughs> I shot myself in the head 10 times. <laughs> Shit like that. Aye. So Kim Jong-il also ensures his brother-in-law is out of the picture, sending him to Europe to be an ambassador. And he's still there. I don't know. Brother-in-law's in Europe. Brother-in-law, right? still well there. Where is he? Europe. Also? Just Europe, mate, somewhere. <laughs> somewhere in Europe. Belfast or something. Also, <laughs> aye. It's in Milton, mate. <laughs> in 1994, Kim Il-sung dies and Kim Jong-il is officially made the supreme leader. Things are about to go from bad to worse for the Korean people. Kim Jong-il was about to double down on the Juche. He's going all in on the Juche. I'm not gonna lie. You thought we were going Juche before? It's just went up a level. You ready for Juche squared, bro? <laughs> oh, Juche squared, mate. <laughs> he immediately sank almost all of the country's money into the military. And this is sort of how he gained respect with the military when he was kind of 
vowing to be leader, he was saying like, his dad's a war hero, right? Mm-hmm. So he, the people actually really respect him and the military respects him because they're like, right, he's one, he's fought, he's served in that. We respect him as a leader. Kim Jong-il just grew up life of luxury. You know what I mean? Aye, so he, they, they didn't quite respect him in the same way that they respected his dad. So his whole thing was like, look, as soon as I'm the man, you are getting everything. Don't worry. So the military in that country are like the elites. Do you know uh, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They're like the highest thing in society, basically. Mm. You can be like you grow up wanting to be a general. Aye, uh, that's like the, that's like the highest thing you can be there. Um, so he immediately sank all of the country's money into the military. His agricultural policies hindered food pro- product productivity. So he would like force he would force independent farms to be like, no, we're all it, you'd go with him, 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 and you're just going to make a big farm. And like, it doesn't work like that because certain guys grow certain things and right. so it just fucked everything up and also he was like once you've got it all get it to us when we sort it out um, the lack of incentives for farmers and the centralised control over resources led to a decline in food production in a matter of years he led the country into a famine fuck sake <laughs> a full on famine but the famine however was never called a famine in North Korea instead it was given the name the arduous march oh. being portrayed to the public as something the country must battle through together. Yes. So he's out and he's like, we all just need to get through this together. Honestly, fight. It's like everything's a PR thing. Everything's how can I twist this? Mm-hmm. On the TV he starts constantly playing documentaries about famine in Africa, like in Ethiopia and stuff to play off their own famine as being no that bad. Aye, so it's happening everywhere. I like, I and like, bugs they're, going about aye, look, look, there's no mad bugs in that here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Could be worse. Well, this isn't as <laughs> roasting hot as that. Aye. Uh, this mixed with their strict policies against any foreign aid turned North Korea into a starving hellhole, but not for Kim. Kim would import foods from all over the world to eat whilst his people starved. He would fly in sushi from Japan, shark's fin soup from China. He dined on lobster and roast donkey. He drank French wine and had a cellar with over 10,000 bottles. He was Hennessy's highest paying customer in the world. Anywhere he goes, he has five female dancers on standby <laughs> and entertainers ready to perform him, perform for him. Sorry. Mate, I didn't realise he was a G like that, bro. Mate, Used to get beer in for Czech- Czechoslovakia at the time. Oh, Budva. Snout for Germany. Oh. He get ev- mate, silver chopsticks, eat French wine. Oh. This oh. guy lived. Henny, mate. bro. He's on the Henny. It's the, it's the highest paying customer in the world for Hennessy. That's fucking hilarious. Man, another order in for a uh, fucking that mad Kim Jong Il. <laughs> Who's that? Uh, they've cut causing a madness. Man, the man. Man. Well, on North Korea. <laughs> Kim then announces to the people they must continue the fight against the famine. He claims that he has even trained his own body so that he requires less fuel and now never needs to shit. Doesn't need to poop. So he was like, ah, look, I've trained my body. I, I'm, he said he was like surviving on a bowl of rice a day. He would always do press conference sort of things in the same outfit. It would look a bit dirty in that mm-hmm. to make it look like look, we're all through this together. <laughs> I'm the leader and I'm fucking suffering. I'm fucked, man. He's like, I'm reading. I'm, I'm on my fucking ass, man. I'm, I'm rock bottom, man. I'm sitting here with a cup of rice, cash out. Fuck <laughs> Any day shits, bro. No, so any what, shits. What man's gonna fucking? They all believe it. They're like, fuck, man. We better get our act here. <laughs> Tensions, though, even after his PR stunt, are rising in North Korea. There are people starving to death on the streets. Kim comes up with a plan that could help his starving nation. He finds a farmer in Germany that can breed rabbits the size of dogs. Mm-hmm. North Korea strikes a deal to set up a farm and requests for twelve massive rabbits to get the ball rolling. <laughs> So he's like, ah, right, we did a whole farm thing. Geese 12 just to get things <laughs> moving sort of thing. A deposit. Uh, uh, a de- Aye. Deposit rabbits. So this is all in the name of ending the hunger of his country. He's like, we're going to do this. We'll get th- these measures. The rabbits were sent to North Korea and were never seen by the public. Instead, all 11 rabbits were cooked and served at Kim's birthday banquet in one of his 24 villas. <laughs> he ate all 12 of them, mate. He ate all the bunnies. He ate all the bunnies, mate. Having <laughs> the milly. Having the milly, mate. I mean, all the bros. All the boys. What a night, but. Oh, that'd be good. Oh, that was good seeing you last night. 12 kills, mate. See all the bunnies, <laughs> mate. I'm rough as fuck. I must have ate a bunny and a half. Oh, <laughs> this stuff can't even move. <laughs> the, bunnies. the bunnies, bro. Oh. This guy, he just lives. He continues to live his life of luxury while his people deteriorate by the day. So, why don't people just leave? 
you're probably thinking that, why can, why do you not just leave? It sounds terrible. Leaving North Korea is obviously insanely difficult. The border into China itself is not complicated to cross, but the implications for doing so are heavy. The culture of snitching creates an atmosphere where people are encouraged to tell on others who they hear speaking about leaving. If you manage to leave and your family are left behind, they are guilty for your crimes. Treason is the most severe crime in North Korea and your entire family will spend life in prison if you escape. So this creates a collective guilt which stops people even considering leaving. And if you try to leave and you get caught, you can expect to be subject to torture in prison. And a classic North Korean torture, one of the best, is making someone sit in the one position without moving a muscle for 18 hours a day. If they move a muscle, they start getting beaten. The explanation for this torture is it's the only way the, tr the prisoner can truly sit and think about what damage he has done. <laughs> Mate, they give him the... That's 18, the 18 hours a day, imagine that, just sitting, and that, as soon as you move eating, they're like, fucking... The ultimate naughty step, bro. <laughs> and they would do the pigeon as well, like tie up... What, what, well, everything like behind. Aye. Oh, I like. I don't, oh, know, no, aye. Aye, I don't like that. I don't like the sound of that one. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the sitting doing for eighteen. I, I don't think I could do that, but I would need like a, a, a Game Boy or something. Because mm -hmm. if I could move my thumbs, I'd be sound. Just, that, just I, just I, a PSP or something. Just a PSP, mate. I'll bash it. <laughs> <laughs> aye, so they still want to try and leave, man. But <laughs> the thing is, as well, you're like, how are they even getting? How's he getting money? Mm -hmm. Like, how's the economy getting any money? He soon became a master of the black market, Kim Jong-il. So soon North Korea became very, very good at selling and trafficking drugs. They became massive arms dealers to basically every enemy that the West had at the time. They also became the best counterfeiters of the $100 bill. Federal Reserve workers in the US admit that a lot of the time, even they can cannot tell the difference between a North Korea note and a real US one. Oof, that's mad, that, isn't it? So they're the best at counterfeiting $100 US bills so in the world. Mate, this kind of is a bad boy, mate, isn't he? He's, just, he's the real bad boy. The ultimate gangster, mate. Aye. He's forging shit and all that. <laughs> like, uh, the income made from these activities funded Kim's extravagant lifestyle while his people suffered massively. The starvation is now at a point where Kim needs help. He decides he's going to receive aid, but on his terms. He needs the world to pay attention to North Korea quickly. Something like the threat of a nuclear bomb would do the trick. Kim releases statements saying he's prepared to launch nuclear weapons that they've privately been working on for years. He's ready to declare war in the West unless he gets his demands. He then stands his men down on the condition that his, his demands are met. The US then send food and medical supplies to North Korea and in the boxes that they're sent. And this is like anytime the US send aid, it always says a gift from the United States of America on the box. But but that would destroy the narrative of like the US or like the ultimate enemy. Aye, like we aye. don't like these guys and that. We hate them. So once the aid is dropped into North Korea, it's placed into different packaging before being distributed to the public. Mm. Kim claims that the US sent the aid as an apology for the destruction they caused during the Korean War. Aye, that's a good spin on that. The little man does it again. <laughs> he keeps the enemy as the enemy in the people's eyes and receives what he needs to keep his people barely alive. It's an annoying thing they've done, but no, isn't it? Like, a, a gift from the US that, Army. so American. <laughs> I mean, from the United States of America. You can imagine, like, the, a, a rainbow with like, a USA flag at the end. You know, I'm at, like, fucking... Aye, you know but he's I mean? like, get it out that. Stars and bars. Get it in that plain one. The, the, not, the NKs can't be seen the stars and bars, bro. Oh, no. No <laughs> chance. <laughs> we'll be having that. Have I got any on me? No, you're the... You're the United States, mate. You're, you've served your a time. A gift from the United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that just shows, man, it's like... The level they'll go to to keep that, and in this whole country, this North Korea, its only purpose is keeping their family, as like the go the the gods. Do you uh -huh. know what I mean? Like it doesn't serve any other purpose than that. Like mm -hmm. they don't export things. They don't. They don't. They, the whole system is built to just keep this family as being like a fucking superpower. That's insane, isn't it? That's the only purpose it serves. That's insane. The Hermit Kingdom, bro. The Hermit Kingdom. So after like that, and for a decade actually, Kim sort of faded out of the public eye. Um, he was suffering with health issues. And in 2011, he passed away from a suspected heart attack. And the next leader would be his third son, Kim Jong-un. And I've got, um, I want just, I, I thought we'd, for a visual of like, how these people are told to act and stuff. I've got 
Yes. Kim Jong Il's funeral. We don't need to watch it all, but just you need to see some of the reactions on this. I'll play, play it in front of you. Many people are there. Millions, bro. A million guys. And he's there, Kim Jong Il. I remember this, do you? Aye, I think so. Aye, I pure remember. I mean, when not was seen this? The- 2011. Aye, 2011. Listen, it just looks so... It doesn't dull, look like Earth. Sombre, it doesn't mm-hmm. look like Earth, aye. That's what I mean, look at that Soviet architecture and mm-hmm. that. It's like, odd, isn't it? Aye, it's weird looking, aye. It just does, it does just look like a bad northern China mm-hmm. or like Russian kind of place, mm-hmm. doesn't it? Pure bleak as hell. Is that? That's Kim Jong Un. Another boy. It's a boy. Wait till you see the crowds of people, like the public. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a man. That's a man. How mad must it be there when one of them actually dies? But you're like, what? What? Mate, I thought he was invincible. It was like, sad as well when Kim Il Sung died. They were like, I didn't know he could die. Mm-hmm. Mate, do you think has this been coordinated? Aye, hundred percent, mate. They're told if your nose, if you're seen and you're no mourning hard enough, you get beaten and put in prison and that. This is all fake. That's insane. Like bro. none of them care. Aye, but I think they must. I think some of them must. Like, mm, but I think if you are brought up. Like all your life like that, mate. Like think about people that love like the Queen and that. Aye. You're like we look at them like Are you alright. But then think about that you? with the propaganda. <laughs> scary, isn't it? It's scary, bro. Who could be asked with that and all? But they've you been need dragged to be out the you, need, you need to be asked, mate. <laughs> You've not got an option. Have they been dragged out the house to go, didn't they? I'm how gonna, like, you living in North Real, uh, I don't care what you say, I'm not gone. Mate, I'm not even <laughs> gone to that fucking thing, mate. The guy was a prick. Mate, what? I'm in the final eight ball pool now, right? <laughs> There's no chance I'm getting down there. What time does it start? I'll fuck, I'll be down later. Like, I'll show face. I'll yeah. go to the, where, where, where's it after it? <laughs> show and show and where he's going after it? I'll show face at the Pyong, funeral. Pyongyang Bowl Club. <laughs> I'll get you down to the bowling club, man. Ah, it's good, it's, a, it's, it's license to free. But there you go, that's like Kim Jong... Kim Il Sung, Kim, J- Kim Jong Il. I, I think it's ins- absolutely insane, mate. It's one of the most insane things to. Because how many people are in North Korea in total? Is that about 5 mil or something? 3 mil? No, much more. 25.9 million. What? That just the North? Just in North Korea? That just, is insane. Mate, that's mate. a massive country. Because like that, but the stuff I've been listening to for a while ago, and it was like four million, and I was saying in Pyongyang, so that's how I'm getting mixed See, up. See, another, sorry, I've just remembered that pure funny story about uh, Kim Jong Il, just quickly, right? Because I forgot about it, I just remembered it there. Please. So, now how he was always getting stuff imported, right? Mm-hmm. He was like, ah, what's this McDonald's carry on the <laughs> rugging on about, right? So he's like, ah, get me one of these fucking cheeseburger things, <laughs> right? So they bring it over. <laughs> And they gave him the cheeseburger, right? And he's like, oh, fucking hell. Takes a bite and he's like, that's outstanding, right? <laughs> but obviously, nobody in North Korea knows about McDonald's that. He knows shit that's going on in the world, aye, but they aye. don't. Do you know what I mean? So he's like, right. And he says, right, I've got a wee idea after eating that. And he invents a thing that's like, in Korean, it translates into like, two bread, one meat. And he, he invents a version of like a hamburger there. And they're like, that, mate, you're a fucking genius. Mate, how he just copied it? that. How has this just came about and it's with the leader? I, <laughs> that leader can date everything. <laughs> so he, the Supreme Leader just came up with us. He just kid you on, he invented it. <laughs> it's just nuts, man. Mate, it's mad how, like, I don't know what I say, he's a sneaky guy. Oh, is he but, sneaky? But it's mad how, like, it's like every opportunity for a bit of sneaking, it's like. There's no other like approach to this other than like all oh, these cunts are dafties and I'm the I'm the goat. It's as I mean? simple <laughs> as that. There's <laughs> nothing more complicated about it than that. And like how's he got like commanders and generals and like a hundred thousand soldiers that like, like how's he got I, all I, this mate, shit? Like mate, but they've just built the society in a way that's like just it, it's it's, date, they're deities mate they're like mad they've done it and I think it's because like it came for like the grander the papa that's came for a time it was like Korea was in a actual bit of 
like a big bit of bother uh-huh. really and then that's like three generations of like schooling re-education like. Aye, mate, rewriting things like it's it's a way where that can only happen to a country that's vulnerable at a point and needs somebody to be like right what are you doing man just cling on to it and you're like I oh, fuck it Gucci I'll do that <laughs> sounds like Gucci sounds like Gucci <laughs> I mean, sounds like Gucci could be good how like Gucci bro who could knows? be a similar to Gucci <laughs> we're getting here but mate I'll take you on yes. and I'll talk about um, the young bull you've had the old ox Never you've had the, the, the other calf now I'm so excited because even... I don't really know anything about him right so mate Kim Jong Un is a North Korean political official who succeeded his father, Kim Jong-il, as Supreme Leader of North Korea in 2011, as you said. the first He was the first secretary of the Korean Workers' Party, and the early years of his reign were characterised by ruthless, a ruthless consolidation of power and saw a sharp acceleration in you know, North Korea's nuclear weapons programmes. So he, like, see when he took power, it was in 2011, obviously, as you said, he was 28. Mm-hmm. He had no military experience. He was like, he was silver spoon times two. Know what I mean? Aye, he's double. Aye, and he had no like military experience. Like a, a lot of his early life was like, uh, there's nothing really, there's nothing really on his early life at all because he, he, he lived out of the public eye. And it was, as I said, like he was, he, he didn't go to the college till late on. He didn't go to the, the, the military college till late on or anything. So when he took power, it was like there was these propaganda films came out. So these uh, documentaries about him and it was just like, I think you can get them. We'll get videos because I'm just doing a kind of brief overview of this now and then we'll, we'll go mm-hmm. dive deep in on part two. But um, there's like these propaganda videos of him like, He's just like in a in a like a satellite war room and he's just keeps hands on the tables and that and he's uh, like got a cigar in his mouth and he's heavy young, not I mean? it up. I church he's trying to go Churchill, mate. Yeah, he's that was like she even had that you need Churchill the hair on this. Like you've like, you've no chance unless you go full Churchill. <laughs> mate, the Kim oh. stuff's all been done before. You need to go Winston, bro. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Winston hangs up. So that's what it was like, mate. It was like these vid- videos of him like um coordinating like big strategies and all that in front of like, thousands of people and then like people who didn't even couldn't even recognize him because it wasn't up until his dad's funeral and that that he was like properly in the public eye so people that didn't even recognize him like military leaders and stuff were like t- instructed to like be like on camera oh my god like it's you like pure bow right, and all that. Like, so there was all that <laughs> there was all that kind of stuff going on but north korea's former former ruler kim jong il had six children and kim jong jun wasn't <laughs> I mean, I'm, the names are quite similar aye, so aye. i'm slipping up a lot but he was his successor wasn't his favorite of his six children it was his daughter kim yo young so she was ne- but she was because she was a girl she was never first choice for like the top job Right, she even was, though it was his favourite? It was his favourite. It was imp- reported at the time that Kim Jong-il looked more favourably upon Yo Jong and made comment, the comment that if she were a man, she would be next in line. We'll talk about her. Mate, uh, I'm happy, honestly, gone ahead for you to call her the lassie. The lassie, thank fuck me. The lassie is good for me. The lassie will be, the lassie will come in a bit more. I'll do a, a, a small... And like a brother, the boy. Uh, the I, like, boy. I'm happy with that. The boy and the lassie. Are we all happy with that? Can we just be happy with that? The, the boy, the lassie, the da and the granda. The dog. <laughs> and then the wee dog. We'll Biff, Chap, Biff we'll, Chapman Kipper. We'll That's in. later on. We'll get into Biff Chapman Kipper. They were, the, they, were the, they were the commandos. <laughs> <laughs> they were one of the commandos. But I'll talk a wee bit about her sister Drew. So she was the youngest known child of the late dictator. Um, Professor Lee, the author of The Sister, the extraordinary story of Kim Yo Jong, the most powerful woman in North Korea. So this guy wrote this book and this is excerpts for it. So Miss Kim had never been officially mentioned in the North Korean state media until 2014, the year her role was announced as deputy director of the propaganda and ag- agitation. How do you say that word? Agitation? Agitation, uh, agitation. The the Aye, propaganda agitation. and agitation department. Agita- having an agitation <laughs> department is so. That sounds like a mad fancy name for like fucking crabs or something. I, I would just done my ab- a- agitation department. I, I would have thought like agitation meant like just annoying countries. I, I think it's like agitate. It probably means like agitating other countries, like <laughs> like. like 
<laughs> try puppet master it all. Aye, yeah, that's <laughs> it. Aye. So um, th- this department is responsible for, for creating propaganda, enacting censorship, and overseeing the country's media. But Professor Lee claims that she'd actually been the de facto head of the department since at least 2012. This means for more than a decade, she's been behind much of the country's local and international messaging around her brother and his regime. So anything we see about them is like, it's her. her. It's coming for her, mate, and she's, she's no the best woman. In no? 2014, Lee said there was a noticeable shift in how North Korea was talking about the outside world. It's a shift he credits to Miss Kim and her role in the propaganda and agitation department. In quotes, North Korea has never been courteous towards South Korea or the US, he says, but from 2014, it got really vile. North Korea state media used racist attacks against US President Barack Obama, homophobic slurs towards the former justice of the High Court in Australia, Michael Kirby, who worked on a major UN study on human rights in North Korea and misogynistic references to Park Yun hee the first woman to be elected president of South Korea. So she's taking the drunk old guy approach Aye. by just shouting the most vile things, you know? She's taking the drunk granddad approach to, to, to her geopolitical, like, enemy. Yeah, fucking pansies, man. Australian we daft to be um, I came to view this as I worked with Kim Yo Jong because since her, the onset of COVID, she's issued more than 40 statements of her own states, Lee. And, en- and evident in many of them says, as a s- sardonic, nasty, cynical streak that, is characteri- that has characterised the North Korean communication since 2014, Miss Kim made a grand entrance onto the world stage in the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, South Korea, and a show of Olympic diplomacy. It was the first time a member of the ruling Kim family had been to South Korea since the Korean War. So nobody, nobody's been there yet since 1952. Aye, or and then she's the first person to go there? Aye, so she attended... Oh, bold the, is it? I know, it? mate. She attended the opening ceremony and she was sitting near the US Vice President, Mike Pence. She later <laughs> handed a letter from her brother to South Korea's President, Moon Jae-in. That was a pivotal moment. Miss Kim was really the public face and that was a huge deal, says Anna Field, the Pacific editor of the Washington Post. Miss Kim then took part in an international event. Uh, sorry. Miss Kim was then part of the team at other international events, including the 2018 North Korea US Singapore Summit and the 2019 North Korea US Hanoi Summit, where both Miss Kim where where both she and Mr. Kim met the US President Donald Trump. Miss Don, Donnie boy, mate. Donnie went and met the fucking the queen of the queen of North Korea, mate. Oh, yeah. um, imagine she like, imagine she just came in. Imagine like the aura she has about her, mate. That she's a fucking savage, just bitch, mate. Wait till you actually hear what she said about uh, South <laughs> Korea, right? I don't know. So, um, Mrs. Fifield says she is clear. Uh, she, it's clear she's become Mrs. Mr. Kim's most trusted and closest advisor. She is much interested in, as Kim Jong Un and the North Korean system of surviving. She has the same goal as he does, keeping the family in power. So she's just in she, it as much as there's no like remorse or that no, for the people. She toes the party line, mate. Aye. Um, in the years since the 2018 Winter Olympics, Miss Fifield said she's proven herself to be every bit as hardline and Machiavellian as her brother. <laughs> and right, this is the quote. He needs to shut his mouth, was the avi- advice Kim Yo Jung, the powerful sister of North Korean Baba, gave to the South Korean president, Yu Suk Yo after his offer of to provide economic aid to Pyongyang in exchange for nuclear disarmament. So he's like, ah, see all the nukes. We'll patch them, we'll give you shit. We, we'll sort you out, we'll and make everything all right, see if you just don't like keep going with all these nukes. It's so mad, but because obviously their whole mission, as we said, is just providing for themselves. So there's never a thought of like, where the fuck would I want aid? I mean, you know. It's not in, it's not in their interest Wait, no, for aid. We've got ballistic missiles and that. We've got everything. We don't, <laughs> we don't live like them. We, <laughs> we get shit. We are cool. We, we are fine. But aye, so that was a bit of his sister, which we'll talk about, obviously, a bit more in the future. But I'll just go back to Kim jong un and kind of tie it up for this episode. Mm-hmm. And um, we'll carry on over on Patreon. So when Kim jong un took over as the leader of North Korea after his father's death in 2011, there was a mix of curiosity and uncertainty around the world. People wondered what kind of leader he would be and if there'd be any changes in North Korea's policies. Kim jong un was relatively young and inexperienced, which added to the intrigue. His early years in power were marked by a combination of consolidating his authority 
within the country and maintaining the regime's strict control over its people. It was a period of observation for many outsiders as they tried to discern any shifts in North Korea's approach to the international relations and domestic governance under his leadership. So this is a time where every country's like, right, this doesn't, we don't know nothing about this wee guy. I, I remember that, but Aye. I remember people like here, they might actually be sound. <laughs> Aye, like, who knows? Nah. <laughs> like, who knows? He might be all right, like, a wee chubby guy, you know what? I, I know, because I think uh, you've gone to it, but he didn't go to school in Korea. He, he went, went to school in Austria. Aye, aye, aye. So, like, you're thinking, when you hear this stuff, you're like, right, he might be sound. Aye, like, we could, could maybe be sound. do a bit of business with this kid. Aye, so he was educated in Switzerland in the International School of Bern, and he went on to study at the, the Kim Il Sung National War College in Pyongyang, 2002 to 2007. So, he did have a bit of like, um, military mm -hmm. kind of background, but for the most part, he was an unknown quantity. So, I think. Every country in the world, like as you say, that I people remember, like that was a mad hang on South Park and all that. There was hunters and shit about like North Korea, they're gonna do this or gonna do that. But then you'd always get somebody like, no, they would never do anything like that. Aye, and it's then not in their interest. And then they're they're like, would be a, these kids done a nuclear test in the Japanese sea, not mm -hmm. which will go on to in the future, mate. Because see, after kind of what I've told you, it just starts to get mental. Mm -hmm. So the, the, that that's really it because I, I kind of want to save right for part two because it's there's just so much but we need to break this up if, somehow. Trips. If I say this, uh, like if I go into the next bit, it's got to be another half an hour Aye. or something. Don't worry, I'm that kind of worms oh, right now. Mate, come on, we don't want to leave it on the gym, mate. No, 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 <laughs> leave some for the ring. That's what we are doing, trips. Um, so we hope you enjoyed that. We're going to go into part two uh, over on Patreon. I think that'll be out. So. Yes, if you want to get involved, patreon.com forward slash Riley's Gaff. We've got lots of more deep frides there. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be doing more deep frides. They're going to be coming more often now. Yes. I think things are going to be easier for us. That's all I'll say at the moment. We'll keep it keep it hush hush, but things are going to get things are going to get a lot better for the old YouTube and for the Patreon and for everybody. We're so going to be posting a lot more. There's going to be so much more than what's happening in you. <laughs> so thank you, troops. We hope you enjoyed it. Patreon.com forward slash Riley's Gaff if you want more content. Cheers. Thank you.